And welcome back to Eurojot 120. I'm Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned at the University of Virginia. And today we're going to be talking about another logical fallacy. Uh, this one is going to be a little bit uh, simpler than the last one. The last one kind of got a little carried away. Uh, but today we're going to be talking about the uh, undistributed middle fallacy. Uh, and so this is going to be kind of a, a bit of a technical terms uh, when, when we say undistributed middle, because really all we mean is an argument of the form something like this, where you have all S's are P's, some T's are P's, therefore all S's are T's. And then this is going to be something that does not actually follow from these two. And we'll get into why a little bit. But the, when we say middle in this context, this undistributed middle, what we mean is this second term, P. Uh, that's all that, that term means in this context. Uh, when we say distributed, uh, all that means is that it, there's a quantifier attached to giving meaning to the, uh, the term that we're, we're talking about. So in this case, uh, S is quantified, T is quantified, but this middle term doesn't end up actually getting quantified at all. And so there's this kind of missing piece of the puzzle that we, we just haven't filled out when we make arguments of this form. This is going to be very similar to denying the antecedent and affirming the consequent. Uh, and you could even view those two as a kind of uh, specialist uh, case of this particular kind of argument. However, uh, this is kind of separate enough on its own that a lot of people consider it on its own kind of a, a mistake that you can make. So what are some examples that we can kind of plug into these uh, kind of terms and then get a, a broader s scope of understanding? So, but before, of course, we get into that, I should probably note uh, that this can be either the existential quantifier or even a universal quantifier. It doesn't really matter. All that matters is that this second term never has the, the entirety of its uh, nature determined by the argument itself. And so some examples of this. So all Californians are beautiful. All women are beautiful. Therefore, all Californians are women. Or sorry, all women are California. Did I get that one right? Probably doesn't matter either way. I think that, that would be a T than S. There we go. So either way. So all Californians are beautiful. All women are beautiful. Therefore, all women are California. Well, of course, that doesn't follow. Uh, it doesn't follow, and there, the reason that it doesn't follow is, let, let's take a look at this. There would be uh, beautiful that... Yeah, the, the, this beautiful doesn't really determine whether this is true or not. It's kind of a canard. It, 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 th there's going to be things that are beautiful uh, that are Californian, and that, that it's not going to really depend upon that, whether or not women are Californian in general. Uh, there, there's no going from T to S I in these two. Uh, it, it, there, there's just no connection there. So drawing a Venn diagram. So all S are P's. All P's are P's. nothing really gets said about this intersection between T and S. So that's just one example. What's another one? Uh, all Russians are revolutionists. All anarchists are revolutionists. Therefore, all anarchists are Russian. Here's another one with all the kind of the, the quantifier in question. Uh, again, there, there's going to be this kind of undistributed part, this thing that's not really defined, which is this connection between T and S, in this case, uh, anarchists and Russians. Mm -hmm. 
It's one with the existential quantifier. Uh, all singers are musicians. Some musicians are not, or are, or hold on, that doesn't work. That looks actually like a proper one. Disregard that one. Okay, so all dogs are mortal. There's one guy, Socrates, who is mortal. Therefore, Socrates is a dog. Well, of course, Socrates is not a dog. And so, again, th this is just, you know, th they're funny examples, but when we're designing systems that have to make their own conclusions, we're going to have to actually codify how these conclusions can be made. And if you find that there's a conclusion that your system is made uh, that has followed this kind of reasoning, you know something has gone wrong. And you know that you have to kind of step back and take a look to see what's missing. And in this case, it's a connection between T and S, uh, between Socrates and the dog nature. So hopefully that's uh, a little bit uh, clear. Uh, again, these are going to be one of the more easy ones to spot, so it's going to be one of the harder ones to find examples of where people intentionally make or unintentionally make this happen. But it will happen occasionally, so keep an eye out for it. As usual, if you're interested in more examples or uh, kind of more of these Venn diagrams or something like that, feel free to ask in any thread where this video is posted. Uh, there should be a Bitcoin donation address, and we are down to our, our last whiteboard marker, so please send us some Bitcoin so we can get another one. Um, and uh, hopefully you enjoy. I'll see you in the next video.